there's this view among people like David Deutsch and others working on artificial intelligence or integrating the the brain with technology, such as Elon Musk's Neuralink, Neuralink project. There's an attitude among many people in that world that eventually we are likely to make any kind of progress that's compatible with the laws of physics. I mean, they, they, you know, imagine super intelligent AI and picture a kind of Star Trek reality where we've, you know, economic scarcity is just a thing of the past. And we've, through the attainment of knowledge, have figured out how to do the most with the least amount of resources and how to do anything that isn't ruled out uh, by the laws of physics. And, you know, my perspective on that attitude has, has always been that, you know, isn't our progress going to run up against the, the basic fact of evolutionary psychology, that we are not built to understand and manipulate the universe, but to survive in a very narrow slice of the universe. And, and so I'm curious how you, as an evolutionary biologist, think of the really optimistic perspective on how much progress we'll make. Okay. Uh, I sympathize with, with your point of view on that. On the other hand, um, isn't it remarkable that although we were built by natural selection to survive in a kind of Serengeti-like environment, hunting and gathering, and nothing else, isn't it remarkable that nevertheless we've managed to do quantum theory, relativity, um, higher mathematics? So somehow the human brain does seem, to, at least some human brains, do seem capable of far outreaching uh, what we were evolutionarily designed to do. So that's, on the one hand, that suggests that the speculators that you've mentioned are right, that um, anything that's physically possible, we will eventually be able to do. On the other hand, where I think evolutionary psychology really might cut, kick in is in the political will to do it. And uh, it could be that although the sort of scientific elite among us, by, in which I don't include myself, by the way, I'm t talking of physicists like, like David Deutsch, mm -hmm. whom you, you, you mentioned, uh, Max Tegmark, people like that, that they will be pushing up into sort of furthest limits, furthest reaches of what's possible. On the other hand, humanity being fallible and being uh, political uh, may uh, never achieve what, what we are potentially capable of. Um, I mean, for example, climate change is a thing that worries most of us. And although it may well be that if we deploy the full power of science, we can get around these problems. Nevertheless, we need the political will to do it. And that maybe that the barrier will come from the political will. So if we were to somehow figure out how to solve the political problems, is it your view that, you know, the, the amount of progress we'll make in the next few hundred years may be really in line with what folks like Elon Musk and yes, the rest I think, of them think Yes, I think so, but, but I think so, but, but it's a very big if, uh, because, uh, because you've got people like Donald Trump in the, in the world with power. And, and so, um, it, it, as I say, it is a very big, big if. So I mean, one solution that would suggest itself based on what you just said is for billionaires to essentially steer around the political obstacles by doing things privately. Um, I mean, Elon Musk would be the, the best example, but there are, there are others like Patrick Collison and you know, other very scientifically literate and curious billionaires that want to be on the forefront of progress to just fund and put their, uh, just put their shoulder to, to these kinds of projects. Um, does, does that seem like a plausible solution? I think it does. Yes. I think, I mean, you've got Elon Musk, you mentioned Jeff Bezos, um, 
uh, Richard Branson. Um, there are quite a few who are who are very scientifically savvy, um, and uh, Charles Simone. Uh, they're very there. There are many like that, and so I suppose they could do yes. So one area where I I am fairly persuaded that the limits of our evolutionary minds are preventing us from understanding an issue, or, or at least might be, is the problem of consciousness. Why, why it, there is something it's like to be this hunk of machinery, to be these survival machines, as you call them in, in the selfish gene. There, there's nothing in the theory of evolution or in the laws of physics, as I understand them, that would explain why it feels like something to be a brain as opposed to a table, which I assume there's nothing it's like to be. Although the further into this conversation, the more you question even those kinds of assumptions. Is, is this something you've given much thought to? I have tried to. I, it, I, I don't, uh, I mean, I think it's a, it's a baffling problem. Um, it seems to me that uh, a a zombie, a robot, um, could be programmed, and there's no reason why natural selection could not have programmed a robot-like creature to do everything that we can do in the in the way of behaving in such a way as to survive, in the way of analyzing sense data and controlling muscles in in a um, in, in an intelligent way, actually. Um, Artificial intelligence, as we know it so far, is, I'm convinced, not conscious. So the, the great chess programs, the Go program, um, the, the, the great artificial intelligence programs are so far not conscious. And they don't know what it's like to be a computer. They don't know what it's like to be a chess playing computer. Um, and... I suppose as a Darwinian, I'm committed to the view that since we are conscious, there must have been a Darwinian survival value in it, that an unconscious, intelligent robot wouldn't do the job as well as a conscious one, which is what we are. Um, but I don't really understand why, and I don't think anybody else really does. Doesn't the existence of things like locked-in syndrome, where you know, uh, there's a what looks to be basically a coma patient that can't move or almost do anything, but we know once they wake up for the co from the coma that they were actually conscious the whole time. Wouldn't that undermine the assumption that the computer programs are definitely not conscious? Because how would we know? How would we know indeed? Yeah. Um, I mean, th there's no doubt about it that, that, that we are conscious. I mean, I know I'm conscious, and I suspect you are, um, because you know, we're, we're, we're similar and we come from the same source. Um, but um, yes, I mean, I think locked-in syndrome is interesting from that point of view. So, as a Darwinian, you it, it would make sense, or or one would believe that consciousness must have some survival value. Um. You know, but it, but it's it's certainly hard to see what it would be. I mean, I, I guess you know I'm influenced by the philosopher Colin McGinn on this point, who essentially makes the point that just like certain animals don't grasp the concept of reflection because it's just beyond their ken. So when they see their reflection in a mirror, they just can't and are never going to understand that that's them. Consciousness is something like that to humans. Like it's, it's just beyond our ken so that we're probably not even asking the right questions. And even the smartest among us actually aren't capable because we're not built to understand what's true at bottom there. Is that a yes, thesis you're familiar with? I am. Um, I, I mean, Colin McGinn is, I suppose, one extreme of those who feel that uh, the pro problem is just simply too difficult that we might as well simply give up. Mm. It's a bit defeatist. Um, I mean, it, 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 if people always have that kind of defeatist attitude, they've never have solved any problems. But admittedly, it is an extremely difficult problem. So I do sympathize with it. 
as an evolutionist, I agree that uh, we were certainly never designed to understand not just consciousness, but um, modern physics. Uh, and yet we do. But I would take a kind of Colin McGinn line when it comes to the possibility that there may be things in physics that we were never designed to understand. It may be that we've already reached the limit, quantum theory and, and relativity, mm -hmm. uh, entanglement, things like that are, are already pushing up against the limit of what the human brain can understand. Um, I mean, or I think already quantum theory, we don't understand. We just know that it produces predictions which are accurate to a right. formidable number of decimal places. And I think the same may be of true of consciousness, that, that we simply are not built to, to understand it. Mm -hmm.